Okay, chicken pox, measles, mumps, and rubella. We're going to start with chicken pox. Okay, the chicken pox vaccine, the chicken pox, the disease. Chicken pox is caused by varicella vaccine. Okay, lesions erupt in crops. Majority are crusted over by six days. Infection is self-limiting and with very rare complications. Treatment is supportive and symptomatic. Okay, this was a normal childhood disease. Kids ages, you know, one to nine, that's where the prevalence is. That's the prevalence rate of almost 100 per 100,000. This was where the kids had normal childhood diseases. That was part of it growing up. The chickenpox vaccine was developed in 1973, and it's a live virus vaccine that's attenuated, which means that it's passed through a series of animal tissues over and over and over and over and over and over again until it becomes weak enough that when it gets injected into the rabbit, or guinea pig, or whatever animal they're using, you can develop an antibody response without developing the disease. That's what attenuation means, is that you take a, a live virus and you grow it over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, and somehow in that regrowing process, it loses its potency, it loses its strength. But the other thing that it does is it passes through each one of those tissues, is it can, has the potential of picking up that little bit of DNA of each one of those tissues as it passes through too. And that process is called transession. And we know in immunology that that is a very real thing that can happen. Each dose of chickenpox vaccine also contains table sugar, gelatin, neomycin, fetal bovine serum, a little bit of human diploid DNA. Good thing is it has no thimerosal. That's a good thing. Now, I'm not going to talk a lot, any about fetal bovine serum in this presentation, but in the other video, this, uh, this, the, the CDC document video that we do, goes into a very long explanation about the problems with having fetal bovine serum as a type of solution that these vaccines are grown in and the potential for viral contaminants out of that. Okay, so what are some of the problems with the chickenpox vaccine? Number one, well, let's see, the antibodies only last for about 10 years, so you don't have lifetime immunity, okay? And vaccinated kids become non-immune adults. And the risk for hospitalization of adults who acquire chicken pox is almost 20 times greater than the risk of a, chid who, a kid who gets chicken pox. And the risk of severe or fatal disease increases from 0.7 per 100,000 to 25 per 100,000 in adults who have chicken pox. Now, another problem is that vaccine-induced that vaccine infection can spread to others. So that means if you get a, your 7-year-old gets a chicken pox vaccine and you take them home, your 3-year-old can come down with chicken pox that comes from that vaccine. And the incidence of developing shingles within 10 years after vaccination has been reported to be almost 1 in 5,000. That's huge. Okay, now what is that about? Okay, most, and the other part that's really serious is that most adults who are currently immune to chicken pox, because most of us probably had chicken pox as a kid, okay, and even if you didn't have it, if you were around other people who had chicken pox, 99% are immune with a positive history and up to 93% are immune if they haven't had, didn't have chicken pox but were around people who had it. Their body just made an immunity to it, made an antibody to it, and they didn't have to manifest the disease, but their body developed long-term long -term protection. And what's really important is that all of us that had chickenpox as a child, in order for us to maintain our lifelong immunity, for us to be able to maintain resistance, we need to get re-exposed to the virus. We need to have our seven and nine-year-olds get chickenpox so that we get re-exposed to the chickenpox so that our immune system goes, oh, I remember that. I remember that and kind of beefs up a little bit, gets a little bit of antibody response, a little bit of T-cell, long-term immunity response, and then you, that keeps you protected from getting it over and over again, also keeps you from getting shingles, okay? And because kids are no longer contracting chicken pox, the natural immunity that adults have to chicken pox is expected to wane. So, October of 2003, this was an article that was published in a mainstream medical journal, three different reports looked at cases of shingles and chicken pox that suggest that there's a real threat of a shingles epidemic due to mass vaccination with the chicken pox vaccine. And that children are now experiencing a higher incidence of shingles and it is predicted that a large scale shingles epidemic will soon be seen among adults, a group becoming more susceptible to a serious complication. That was published in Vaccine. I mean, that's like a, the mainstream top of the line Vac, uh, vaccination journal that's saying that we are now, that, and, th and this got a lot of press uh, in, the, in the European press, not a, lot of, not a lot here. So to solve this problem, what are we doing? 
because the vaccine has eliminated the wild virus. Well, the humans are the only known reservoir for that, for that particular virus. So the chicken pox is sort of like, you know, like the Hib, you know, the H flu meningitis, the, I mean, the H flu bacteria that the vaccine came along and killed off that bacteria and made it go away. Well, the chicken pox vaccine has attacked the chicken pox virus and made it go away. And because we're not getting that natural abu a, a, a boost, our immunity is going to wear off. So manufacturers are planning to license a booster shingles vaccine as a substitute for boosting that occurs naturally from wild chickenpox virus. So now we're creating yet even another problem, another vaccine to protect us against a problem that was caused by a vaccine. I actually had the opportunity to talk to the head of the, at, at the CDC to the gal who was the head researcher for the chickenpox vaccine because there was a, par, a paper that was published that it, it was just it didn't make any sense. So I called down there to, to talk to somebody about it, and they bounced me around until I got to this gal, and she was the first person who told me this. That that's the theory now that our it, that we're good, our immunity is all going to wane, and that uh, shingles vaccine for adults is now in, at the time, probably in stage three at least, or stage two clinical trials in Japan to keep our, to, to be able to protect us against that. And I said to her, I go, gosh, it just seems as though we ought to let the kids get chicken pox. Well, she had to go. She didn't want to talk after that. I mean, seriously, she, I mean, it, it was like so far out of her paradigm. But now we are creating more vaccines. Now we had to create the Prevnar because of the Hib. And we had to create, now we're creating a shingles vaccine because of the chicken pox vaccine. And we're going to talk about another one here in just a couple of minutes. Now this is one of the concerns that comes up, which what about chicken pox exposure in pregnant women? Is that a real risk or not? Is that something we have to be really concerned about? Well, first of all, in order for it to be a real risk, you have to have a significant contact. If you're pregnant, you have to have, have a significant contact with someone who has chicken pox. And how a significant contact is defined is face-to-face -face contact with someone who has a case of chicken pox for at least five minutes or be in direct contact with somebody for more than an hour. So, I don't, so transient exposure is unlikely to, to have a significant effect. You know, so that's not a real reality. The, de the definition is considered, uh, and, and most people are considered immune, and that pregnant women found to be non-immune and have a significant exposure, they may want to consider getting vaccine immune globulin or give it to their neonate at birth. And when you actually go through and read all these documents, the whole risk of varicella-induced um, problems with the, with the, with the fetus is, is really, um, it's, it's so rare that it's almost theoretical. When you go through and you actually read these papers, it's, it, it, yes, it happens, but it happens so rarely that it's almost a theoretical risk. So nothing in life is ever zero, but this is probably as close down to zero as you can, as you can be. It's not a very real risk.